Summer of the Monkeys by Wilson Rawls, read by Heather Raleigh, Chapter 14. Thirty minutes later, Papa and I had our old blacksmith shop ringing. About that time, I looked through the open door and saw Daisy come out of the house and start up the trail to her playhouse. Rowdy was with her. He was walking along in front of her, wagging his tail as if he didn't have a worry in the world. Daisy was hobbling along on her old crutch and was carrying a broom. Every few steps, she would poke Rowdy in his rump with the broom, and he seemed to be liking it. He was wiggling all over and snapping at the broom straws. I stopped turning the handle on the blower. Papa saw me looking out the door, and he too turned and looked toward the hillside. For several seconds, Papa just stood there, with the tongs in one hand and a hammer in the other, watching Daisy and Rowdy make their way up the trail. Papa turned again to the anvil and whammed it with the hammer. It's tough to be a poor man, son, he said. It's really tough. Papa, I said, is it true that Daisy's old leg is getting worse all the time? Mama said it was. Papa whammed the anvil again. I'm afraid it is, son, he said, and there doesn't seem to be anything I can do about it right now. But some day I will, or I'll die trying. But Papa, I said, Grandpa and Grandma are saving money, and so are you and Mama. How much money does it take to get Daisy's legs straightened out? It takes a lot of money, son, Papa said, more money than all of us have, a lot of money. Just then I heard Daisy yell from the hillside. I had never heard her yell like that. It was scary. Mama, come quick, hurry, Mama, hurry. Mama came flying out the back door. I could see that she was really scared. First she looked toward the blacksmith where Papa and I were standing in the open door. From the hillside, Daisy yelled again, hurry, Mama, oh, hurry. Mama tore up the trail faster than I had ever seen her run. What is it, Daisy, she yelled. Are you all right? Papa looked at me. I could see the scare in his eyes. His face turned a pasty white. He dropped the hammer and tongs from his hands and snatched a pitchfork from the wall. He shouted, snake. Then he tore out of the blacksmith shop in a loping run. When Papa shouted, snake, my old heart jumped clear up in my throat. I could just see a big diamondback rattler up in Daisy's playhouse, all coiled up, buzzing, and ready to sink his poison fangs into anything that moved. Maybe he had already bitten Daisy. Papa was halfway across the barn lot before I caught up with him. We didn't take time to open the gate. We just jumped the rail fence and headed up the trail to the playhouse. A little bell kept dinging in my head and seemed to be saying, Something isn't right. Something isn't right. When I finally figured out what it was, I said in a loud voice, Papa, it's not a snake. How do you know it's not a snake? Papa shouted. Rowdy, Papa, I said. If there was a snake up there, you could hear him bawling all over these hills. You know that. It's not a snake, I tell you. Papa slowed down. I guess you're right, he said, but I wonder what it is. I don't know, I said, but I know it's not a snake. When Papa and I came puffing up to the playhouse, we found Mama, Daisy, and Rowdy all standing in a row, looking at the ground. Papa was holding the pitchfork out in front of him. What is it? A snake? he asked. No one said a word. It was as still as a sleeping groundhog around there. I looked down to see what they were looking at on the ground. I couldn't see anything but a few little toadstools that had jumped up through the damp earth. What is it? Papa asked again in a loud voice. What's wrong? Look, Papa, Daisy said as she pointed with her hand. It's a fairy ring. A fairy what? Papa asked. A fairy ring, Papa, Daisy whispered. Then I saw it. The snow white circle of little toadstools in a ring that looked about ten feet around. Each toadstool was about the same height. I looked closer and could see that the little stools were the same distance apart, about eight inches. The snow white ring, the height of the stools, and the distance between each stool was so perfect I could have sworn that someone had planted them. 
All my life I had heard stories of a fairy ring. How rare it was, one of the rarest things ever to be found in the Ozark Mountains, and how lucky it was to find one. I knew there was a legend about the ring, but I was so stunned I couldn't remember it. I just stood there with my mouth open. I looked at Mama. I had never seen such an odd expression on her face or such a warm, tender glow in her eyes. She knelt down, reached out, and touched one of the little toadstools with her hand. In a low voice, Mama said, A fairy ring. Oh, how wonderful. So very few have been found. It's a miracle. That's what it is, a miracle. Then I noticed something that I hadn't noticed before. A strange silence had settled over the hills. No birds were singing. No squirrels were chattering. I couldn't hear a thing. It was so quiet. I couldn't remember a day that you couldn't hear something around our home, a cackling chicken, a grunting hog, or a mooing cow. I kept listening and waiting to hear something, any kind of sound. But there was nothing, absolutely nothing, just silence all around us. Isn't there a legend about the fairy ring, Papa said in a low voice? Seems like I heard something about it once. There is, Papa, Daisy said. It's an old, old legend, hundreds of years old, and I believe it, too. Tell us about it, Daisy, Papa said. If Papa had gone all over the world, he couldn't have found a better storyteller than my little sister. They just didn't make them any better. All right, Papa, I will, she said. According to the legend, fairies make the ring so they'll have a place to dance. Some of the fairies sit on the toadstools and clap their hands while the other fairies dance in the circle. Whoever finds a fairy ring is very, very lucky. If you step in the center of the ring, kneel down and make a wish, the wish will come true. Papa looked at Mama. See, I remember now, he said, not long after we came here from Missouri, someone found a fairy ring. Don't you remember that? Yes, Mama said, I remember all about it. There's a story about that fairy ring, quite a story. Oh, Mama, tell us, Daisy said. Please, Mama. Mama smiled and glanced at Papa and me. She could see by the looks on our faces that we wanted to hear the story, too. It happened not long after we moved here from Missouri, she said. I'll never forget it. You children were just little things at the time. For a few seconds, Mama stopped talking. Never taking her eyes from that snow-white ring, she said, Up the river away, there's a place called Hanging Rock Bluff. Just this side of Hanging Rock, there's a big hollow called Pea Vine Hollow. At the head of it lived a family by the name of Garland. They had a young daughter by the name of Luann, who was in love with a boy by the name of Johnny George. They were to be married and had already set the wedding date. Luann and Johnny were such a nice young couple and so well-liked that people from all over the hills started making up a dowry for them. They were given a team of mules, a milk cow, chickens, pigs, and all kinds of farm machinery, even a little money. It was going to be a big wedding, and everyone in the hills was invited. Mama paused, and again she reached out and fingered one of the little toadstools. About a month before Luann and Johnny were to be married, something terrible happened, she said. Johnny George was called away to war. Luann's heart was broken, but she went right on with her wedding plans as if nothing had happened. She even made her wedding dress. Luann got one letter from Johnny. He told her that he was serving with Teddy Roosevelt and his rough riders. Then months went by and not another word was heard. The Garland family felt so sorry for her. Everyone in the hills felt sorry for her. But Luann wouldn't give up. She told everyone that her Johnny would come home and they would be married. Then one day, old man George came to the Garland home. He had a letter from the War Department. Johnny George was missing in action. People said when Luann heard Johnny was missing, she went out of her mind. From that day, she never spoke one word to anyone, not a word. She walked around as if she were in a daze. 
and started taking long walks in the hills. People said that many times on moonlight nights she would put on her wedding dress and go walking in the hills all alone, just walking along with her head bowed. It was so sad. One morning, right after a rainstorm, while she was walking in the hills, she found a fairy ring. She had heard the old legend, and so she stepped into the center of the ring, knelt down, and made a wish, a wish that God would send Johnny George home to her. Three days later, in the twilight of the evening, just as the garlands had seated themselves at the supper table, they heard someone singing. All excited, Luann got up from the table. With tears in her eyes and a smile on her face, she looked at her mother and said, Mama, Johnny's coming home. Those were the first words that Luann had spoken in a long, long time. The garlands rushed out onto the porch of their home and looked down the road. Sure enough, it was Johnny George coming. He was wearing his army uniform and had a white bandage around his head. He was walking along so proud, tall and straight, and with his shoulders thrown back. At the top of his voice, he was singing the old mountain song, It's Whippoorwill Time. Mama hesitated and said, Let's see. I used to know the words of that old song. Let's see. Oh, yes, I remember. In the twilight of evening, when everything's still, a song can be heard in the Ozark Hills. It's Whippoorwill Time. It's Whippoorwill Time. I know of no music that has such a thrill as the twilight song of an old Whippoorwill. It's Whippoorwill Time. It's Whippoorwill time. Children stop playing, and old ones stand still and listen to the song of an old Whippoorwill. It's Whippoorwill time. It's Whippoorwill time. In the peaceful silence, while lightning bugs glow, all work is forgotten, for the mountain folk know it's Whippoorwill time. It's Whippoorwill time. When I leave this old world and climb that steep hill, I hope I am followed by an old whippoorwill. It's whippoorwill time. It's whippoorwill time. I know he'll be singing as I walk along his song of the hills, the whippoorwill song. It's whippoorwill time. It's whippoorwill time. After Mama had finished the song, it was very quiet for a few minutes. Then Daisy said, Oh, Mama, it's such a beautiful story. Did Luann and Johnny get married? Yes, Mama said, nodding her head. Luann and Johnny got married. It was one of the biggest weddings ever held in these hills. They live in Peavine Hollow and have a wonderful family. I met them once at your grandfather's store. I looked at Daisy. She was standing there, leaning on that old crutch and looking at the fairy ring. Two big tears were slowly rolling down her cheeks. Again, I noticed that strange silence that had settled over the hills. I looked up into the branches of the big red oak. There, on a limb, sat a gray squirrel. He wasn't making a sound. He was just sitting there as still as a rock, peering down on us. Even his bushy tail wasn't jumping, and that was very unusual. A little wren flew in from the mountains and lit on a low branch of the red oak. I had never seen a wren that could sit still for very long. They seem to be such nervous little birds and are always hopping around and making a racket. That wren never moved or made a sound. It just sat there on the limb as still as a broken fiddle and seemed to be looking at Daisy. I glanced to my right just as a chipmunk darted to the top of an old hickory stump. He sat up on his tail end as stiff as a broom handle with his small front paws bent downward. He never made a squeak. He just sat there as still as the stump he was sitting on, peering at us with his beady little eyes. Papa had noticed the silence, too. I could tell by the way he looked around. I couldn't stand that silence. I knew if I didn't say something, I was either going to bust wide open or start bawling. Boy, I said in a quavering voice, it sure is still around here. Why doesn't somebody say something? Well, if finding a fairy ring means you can make a wish, 
and it will come true, Papa said. I think we should step in this one and make a wish. I do, too, and I think Daisy should make the first wish. She found the fairy ring, Mama said. Oh, no, Mama, Daisy said. You make the first wish. Please, Mama. Go ahead, Daisy, Papa said. Make a wish. After all, you were the one that found it. Go ahead, Daisy, I said. Make a wish. You found it. I knew what my wish was going to be. There was no problem. I was going to wish that I could catch those monkeys, make all that money, and get a pony and a twenty-two. Daisy smiled. All right, she said. I will. She closed her eyes and said, Let's see now. What can I wish for? What can I wish for? Then, clapping her hands together to show her delight, she said, I know what I'll wish for. I know exactly what I'll wish for. Just before Daisy stepped into the center of the ring to make her wish, she turned her head and looked straight at me. Her blue eyes were as bright as the morning star, and a warm smile tugged at her lips. When I saw my little sister kneeling in the center of that snow-white circle and that old crutch laying on the ground beside her, I forgot about ponies and twenty-twos. I wanted my little sister to get that old leg of hers fixed up. I wanted that more than anything I ever wanted in my life. That was going to be my wish. Once I had made up my mind, I felt pretty good about it. In fact, I had never felt better in my life. I looked at Mama and Papa. They were watching Daisy as she knelt in the center of the fairy ring. I had never seen such tender, longing looks on their faces. I was pretty sure I knew what their wishes were going to be. They were going to wish for the same thing I was. Mama and Papa tried to get me to make the second wish, but I out-argued them. I told them that I wanted to be last. All my life I had been wishing for things. Everything you could think of, I had made a million wishes. But the morning I knelt in the center of the fairy ring, I wished harder than I ever had before. I put all my heart and soul into that wish. After we had made our wishes and were standing there looking at the fairy wing, Mama said in a low voice, I've been hoping and wishing for so long. I hope the good fairy grants me this one wish, just this one wish. Don't tell anyone what you wish, Daisy said. If you do, the wish won't come true. Well, Papa said, it looks like we've done about all we can here, and there's a lot of work to be done. All we can do now is wait and see if our wishes come true. Mama looked up at the sun. She said, it's time I started fixing dinner. I'll help you, Mama, Daisy said. I can clean my playhouse later today. It's a little too wet now anyway. We hadn't taken ten steps down the trail when I noticed that Rowdy wasn't with us. I turned around to see where he was and was just in time to see him step very gently over the little toadstools into the fairy ring. He dropped his old nose to the ground and started sniffing around. Rowdy, I said in a hard voice, you get out of there. You're going to step on one of those toadstools and mash them in the ground. Rowdy didn't budge an inch. He sat down on his rear and looked straight at me. He whimpered a few times and his old tail waggled all over the place. Daisy giggled. Leave him alone, Jay Berry, she said. Don't you know what he's doing? Sure, I know what he's doing, I said. He's trying to figure out what we were doing in the fairy ring. He's just nosy. No, he's not nosy, Daisy said. He's making a wish, just like we did. That's what he's doing. Aw, oh, Daisy, I said. What are you saying? Who ever heard of a dog making a wish? Dogs don't do things like that. Mama and Papa had turned around and were watching Rowdy. Both of them were smiling. Jay Berry, Mama said, maybe Rowdy is making a wish. Sure looks like he is. Papa chuckled. That old hound is smart. I'm not surprised at anything he does. I've seen him do things that I couldn't believe. He's smart, all right, I said. If I'm digging fishing worms, he'll start digging holes in the ground. He tries to do everything I do. Papa laughed. Does he ever pick up a worm and put it in the can, he asked. I smiled and said, no, I've tried to get him to do that, but he won't have anything to do with worms. Just then, Rowdy came bounding out of the fairy ring. 
He came to me, reared up, and put his paws on my shoulders. When Rowdy reared up on me like that, he was just about the same height as I was, and there was no way I could dodge his lapping tongue. He lapped me on the neck and ears and all up and down my face. He even pushed my old straw hat off my head and lapped me a few times up there. I loved him and squeezed him and scratched behind his ears. He liked that. Rowdy, if you did make a wish, I said, I bet I know what you wished for. A big bone or a meat rind. Oh, how I love that old Houghton dog of mine. Daisy was smiling. I don't think Rowdy wished for a bone or a meat rind, she said. I bet he wished those monkeys would disappear. Both Papa and Mama were laughing as they started down the trail again ahead of Daisy and me. Papa was carrying the pitchfork in his left hand, and his right arm was around Mama's waist. We heard him say to Mama, Did you notice how still it was there at the fairy ring? Yes, I did, Mama said, and I couldn't understand it. I've never seen the hills so quiet. You can always hear something. Mama, Daisy said, I know why it was so still there at the fairy ring. Oh, Mama said, glancing back at Daisy. Why? Because the old man of the mountains was there, Daisy said. That's why. Aw, oh, Daisy, I said, you're always seeing things. I never saw any old man. Did you see anyone, Mama? No, Mama said, I didn't see anyone. But I did have a strange feeling. Maybe the silence had something to do with it. I felt that something was watching us, something I couldn't see. I think we all felt something, Papa said. I know I did. Jay Berry, Daisy said, just because you didn't see the old man of the mountains doesn't mean he wasn't there. He was there all right. He's always there. If you ever believed anything in your life, you can believe that. Just then, an old white leghorn hen came sailing out of our hen house, flapping her wings and cackling her head off. I knew that she had just laid an egg and it had probably tickled her half to death. It always did. The cackling hen seemed to awaken the silent hills. Birds started singing, squirrels started churring, and chipmunks started squeaking. In the underbrush, close to the trail, I saw a little wren. It was hopping around and chirping. I wondered if it was the same wren I had seen in the red oak tree. Papa stopped and started looking around at the hills. With a smile on his face, he said, Now this is more like it. This is the way it's supposed to be. If you take the music out of these hills, they're not the same. Just as we reached the house, Mama turned to Daisy and said, Why don't you go to the garden and pick some fresh tomatoes and cucumbers? We'll have them for dinner. Sure, Mama, Daisy said. After that rain last night, I bet I can find some dandies. Papa and I went to the blacksmith's shop to finish our work. While Papa and I were working, I kept thinking about the fairy ring and the wishes we had made. I couldn't get them out of my mind. Papa, I said as I stopped turning the handle on the blower, do you believe that the wishes we made at the fairy ring will come true? Papa didn't answer me right away. I could see by the expression on his face that he was having trouble finding the right words. Then, looking at me, he said, Son, that's a pretty hard question to answer, but I do believe that any wish you make can come true if you help the wish. I don't think the Lord meant for our lives to be so simple and easy that every time we wanted something, all we had to do was wish for it, and we'd get it. I don't believe that at all. If that were true, there would be a lot of lazy people in this old world. No one would be working. Everyone would be wishing for what they wanted or needed. Papa, I asked, how can you help a wish? Oh, there are a lot of ways, Papa said. Hard work, faith, patience, and determination. I think that prayer and really believing in your wish can help more than anything else. I sure hope the wish I made in the fairy ring comes true, I said. I'll do everything I can to help it. After Papa had explained about helping wishes, I still had one more thing I wanted to ask him. Papa, has Daisy said anything to you about the old man of the mountains, I asked. No, Daisy hasn't said anything to me about him, Papa said, but your mother has. Do you believe that she really sees that old man, I asked. Papa frowned as if he were in deep thought. Before he answered, he laid his hammer down on the anvil, turned, 
and started stirring up the fire in the forge. Yes, son, he said. I believe that Daisy does see the old man of the mountains. It may be just her imagination, but I believe that she does see something. There is one thing I know. All little children who are crippled can see things and hear things that you and I can never see or hear. I think the Lord has something to do with this. It could be his way of showing them mercy. That's what Mama told me, I said. She thinks that the old man of the mountains is a spirit. Do you think he's a spirit? Papa thought a second. Your mother could be right, he said. What Daisy is seeing could be the spirit of Christ. Lots of people have seen his spirit, especially those who are in pain or deep trouble. It happens every day somewhere in the world. I was so startled by what Papa had said I couldn't say a word. I even got scared a little. Right then I decided that never again would I tell my little sister that she wasn't seeing the old man of the mountains. I was thinking about the way Daisy had described the old man to me when she poked her head out of the back door and yelled, Come and get it, or we'll feed it to the chickens. Papa chuckled. It looks like we'd better go in for some dinner, or we won't get any, he said. <laughs>